always love hip hop. Keep it flowing like a river, so I drip drop. Versus in bars, we eating dinner with the stars. Excuse me while I float away, my brain is on Mars. Cause it's the Big Hits Podcast with Chris Williams. Sit back, relax, like your spliff, we in the building. Yo, 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 this is Chris Williams, and welcome back to the Big Kids Podcast. How's everybody doing? Same old same, huh? <laughs> same over here, guys. I'm just getting ready for this fantasy football draft. I've done about six, seven already up until this point. Gotta get ready. You know, you gotta know where people are picking certain uh, players, where I might be able to get some sleepers at. Everybody drafts a little bit different, but they draft the same. Now, I'm giving the puppies a little a little leeway here. I never recorded this podcast with them down here. But I'm going to let them chill. As long as they don't start barking and all that other shit. They can wrestle around and all that. But as soon as they start barking, they got to go upstairs. So, if you guys hear a bark... Just, just, just let it be known that you will that will be followed with a pause, and then uh, uh, we're gonna have to pick back up because I'm not dealing with these two. These two are fucking wild, like they are literally like uh, uh, what what was my man's name in the wild thornberries, the 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 little kid that they found in the jungle. That's these two jumping off of shit don't care five feet in the air they will jump off that shit onto the other one like this is wwe <laughs> so so yeah i'm trying to give them a shot they're doing okay i'm hearing some huffing and puffing i'm looking at them they're, they're over here wrestling i don't know if you guys can hear them but yeah so we're gonna give it we're gonna we're gonna give the young bucks a shot we're gonna we're gonna see if they can handle this <laughs> But anyway, yeah, super excited for football this year. It's it's had to have been at least two years before since I've been this excited to watch some football. Um, I'm excited to watch college football. I'm excited to watch NFL. Um, I got the, the the setup for this season, so I'll at least at the very least I'll have two games going at once. See, they're in the back starting. They're starting their bullshit, guys. I'm trying to record a podcast. Can you be quiet a little bit? Sorry, they, they, they're they a little worked up. I had today off, so I went down to Binghamton, had lunch with my dad and some of the people that he works with. It honestly feels pretty cool when you go to lunch with your dad and, 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 you, and you're the one that pays. <laughs> it's super fucking cool to be the one that pays. But while I'm there, I'm also, you know, hearing about workplace politics, guys, and I don't really truly believe I could work in a place where I had to deal with that type of shit on a day-to-day basis. Like, I love my job because it's, here's your assignment, do it, do it on, do it within this period of time, turn your paperwork in by this day and i don't really have to deal with anybody besides that i couldn't deal with somebody trying to get the upper leg for a promotion or try to get the upper leg in terms of the director or the supervisor i couldn't do that shit man because i would have to say something and me saying something would probably get me fired <laughs> like yo man you're not just gonna try to fucking tread on me to get to a better spot when we're all just supposed to be here to do our job and go home now i completely understand if i'm making your job harder more difficult uh putting more food on your plate to finish but if i'm not doing any of that shit mind your own fucking business you want to talk about methods and how we go about uh, uh, completing our assignments and, uh, you know, talking to families and kids and how we get through? Cool. But don't try to fucking one-up me. <laughs> don't pull a Game of Thrones on me. I'm not playing that shit. I'm really fucking not. I want to... <clears throat> Listen. As much as I enjoy my job, as much as I love what I do... I don't want to fucking work. Who wants to fucking go to work? Have to go to fucking work? Nobody. So with that being said, I want to do my job, do it to the best of my ability for what I'm getting paid, and I want to take my ass home. Plain and simple. You, 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 listen, it's really like high school out here for some people. Some people never left. Some people are always worried about what the next person's doing, what the next person's making, how many hours they did this, that, and I don't give a fuck about any of that. 
I wouldn't give a fuck if you didn't show up to work and you got paid as much as I did. I would not give a fuck. You know why I wouldn't give a fuck? Because I don't got time to give a fuck. Life is absolutely way too short for me to be counting somebody else's fucking pennies. For me to be counting somebody else's change. I'm not taking the time to do that shit. I need what I need and I don't give a fuck about what you got. I don't give a fuck about what you have, what you're making. Let me get what I need out of this situation. Let me do my job. Let me make sure it's done on time. And besides that, you can suck my dick. I'm not in there fucking beefing with, with, with other caseworkers about fucking anything. I'm not even beefing with the families. This is your life. I'm here to try to help. You tell me how I can help. I'm here to try to help. If you don't want my help, by all means, you do not need to take it. I am not here to make you do anything that you do not want to do. I'm here to try to help. Not in my reality, in your reality. Not in things that I want to accomplish, things that you want to accomplish. And and let's be honest, when things align, that's cool. If we have similar interests and you could teach me something, I could teach you something, that's fucking great. You know, I think that's just a bonus. But besides that, it is what it is. If you don't want my help, I don't take it personal. If you don't want to be around me, I don't take it personal. If at the very least, you don't want to go grab lunch with me to talk about ways in which we can help you, I don't take it personal. I used to. I used to think I was going to save every single person that I worked with, every single family that I worked with. I thought that this shit was going to be a, a, a stand and deliver type of situation, a freedom writers type of situation <laughs> where I come in, swoop in, 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 in 20, 30 years and making a movie about me. I definitely thought that. But then you realize a lot of people are comfortable the way that they are. And that, and again, that's fine. Just don't make my life any harder. Because I subscribe to the shit pyramid. And that's why at my job, I try to make sure everything's done on time in the way that they want it done. And if I don't do it that way, just let me know. And I'm going to do it because one, I don't want any trouble for you. Because if you get trouble, if you got to deal with bullshit... The shit rolls downhill, and then I'm going to have to deal with some bullshit. I'm going to have to deal with some trouble. So, just do what the fuck you're supposed to do, and go home. Spend your time outside of work however you choose to spend it. But stop making people that you work with, stop making their lives more difficult than it fucking already needs to be. At the end of the day, guys, what we bitch and complain about majority of the time is a bunch of first world problems. It's not real fucking problems. It's not real fucking serious situations. It's a bunch of first world issues. Oh, I can't go buy this. Oh, I can't go vacation that. Or even, oh, something happened to my plumbing. Like, yes, th these are all very much pains in the ass. These situations are a serious pain in the ass, but it's not the end of the fucking world majority of the time. And the world shit is when your house gets flooded. <laughs> it's when your shit burns down, gets struck by lightning, a tree falls on it. Even those situations, a lot of the time, there are ways to get some sort of results, some sort of traction in the direction that you want to go with it. It's not the end of the world. No one's selling your ass on the black market. Nobody's got you tied up. And again, let me clarify that. That's just the majority. There are absolutely people who live those types of lives that aren't so desirable. For everybody, for everybody who's on Instagram living the life that everybody quote unquote wants to fucking live. But like I've said on this podcast many times before i think people really need to get comfortable with the idea that you're not fucking special this whole what's up king bless you queen shit stop it none of you are motherfucking king none of you are motherfucking queen you're a regular fucking person you are a regular person working a job just like everybody else and i think people need to come to terms with that Life would be so much 
fucking simpler, life would be a lot better to you if you came to terms with your circumstances. And I'm, that's not... And that's not to say that you can't do better. You can't strive to do other things. But in the grand scheme of things, you ain't shit. I ain't shit. I ain't cure cancer. I didn't fucking solve the, uh, the, the, the global pollution problem. I didn't do these things. I'm just trying to find my niche. I'm just trying to find my lane and just live my life. I'm not trying to keep up with anybody on motherfucking Facebook, Instagram. You know who I'm trying to keep up with? Motherfuckers like Adam Sandler. That's who I'm trying to keep up with or who I inspire to be. Uh, I talked about it the other week. Week Pat McAfee. Those are the types of people where I wake up and what I put on my back does not determine who I am as a person. Pat McAfee wears the same. I, I, I shouldn't say the same. But it can't be that expensive. The motherfucker wears a black beater every single day. Adam Sandler looks like he just shopped at Walmart damn near every single day. And I'm sure they are happy as fucking clams. <laughs> I'm sure they got bullshit they got to deal with. I'm sure they got fucking people in their lives that they don't want to deal with. But at the end of the day, I think that these types of people realize that this money shit, all that gives me the opportunity to, the opportunity to do is tell you, fuck you. I'm not doing that. When you got enough money and enough money, it's, it, it's a person to person thing. But when you have enough money where you don't really give a fuck about what people think about you, what people got to say about you what other people are doing what other people have and you're just comfortable with what you got i think that's heaven that's heaven that's a goal that's something that everybody should strive for and 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 just even going to get lunch today with my dad and and, and some of his workers my dad has worked for the city of binghamton for 30 fucking years you know 30 years and and he has put in time and things have gotten easier over the years but he's dealt with a lot of bullshit and me and him have conversations all the time about how people use department of social services kind of like a retirement fund and and he softened up on it a little bit after having discussions with me but Coming from somebody who picked garbage for a good portion of his life, picked people's nasty ass fucking garbage, I get where he's coming from. He's out there, the people he work with are out there every single day doing hard work. Now, are they fucking doing it with the goal that they'll have a six pack and humongous packs and treating it like a fucking workout? Probably not. The shit sucks, but they do it. You know, and for everybody that complains about my recycling didn't get picked up here, there's a pothole over here, this, that, and the third. Guys, you have to understand that this is a tough fucking job. Garbage men, road workers do get they get absolutely no fucking credit for anything. When the pandemic was going down, we were giving a whole bunch of credit to the doctors, the the, the nurses, the grocery store workers, and they deserved it. They absolutely fucking deserved it. But they didn't say shit about the people picking the garbage. They didn't say shit about the people fixing the fucking potholes. They didn't say shit about the people taking care of the sewage treatment plants. Nothing about those people was ever said. Rarely ever. Any of them got any sort of uh, uh, COVID payments for sticking through during this whole entire debacle. None of that shit was happening. So when my dad feels a little fucking uh, 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 disrespected and people aren't showing these, the, these sanitation workers, these road workers, the respect that they deserve because they have a problem with the fact that they put too much garbage in their fucking garbage can and it wasn't picked up that week. Come on, guys. Come on. And I used to grow up and... and I used to grow up. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a garbage man. My dad was a garbage man. I wanted to be a garbage man. I remember kindergarten. I fucking, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a garbage man. And the older I've gotten, my dad, first of all, when I was five years old, told me, absolutely, you don't want to be no fucking garbage man. I'm telling you. <laughs> but as growing up, 
and living the life that I live right now, that was garbage man money that got me here. That was garbage man money. That was nurse's assistant money that got me here today. You know, we didn't live no glamorous fucking life in, in, in the grand scheme of things, but we got to live better than a lot of fucking people. I, am, I talked about it last week. I am super grateful for my parents both being there, both having jobs. You know, and that, and that sounds kind of standard, like this is what you're supposed to do. But a lot of times, that's not how things play out. A lot of times, people don't do the things that they're supposed to fucking do. So, you know, sorry guys, I'm going on a fucking rant. <laughs> but, it, but, but bringing it back to, to lunch... It just felt good to be around those guys knowing that this is how I got to where I am. Indirectly, this is how I got to where the fuck I am. And you know, I, I it just sucks. It just sucks that even though... Sorry, guys, I'm trying to put a thought together. <laughs> When you rant like this sometimes, you, you're, you're on a roll. You're fucking rolling. The words are coming to you. Boom, 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 boom. But then once you're at the end of the roll, roll and you're trying to transition into something else, it don't really work out too well. <laughs> I'm talking about office politics. I'm talking about fucking being grateful for what you got. We're only fucking 15 minutes into this thing. <laughs> fucking hit 18 different fucking things haven't even looked at my notes because i did take a couple notes this week last week i didn't take any fucking notes and i think it kind of showed this week i'm in the same fucking vein but uh but i have notes <laughs> i guess i guess the point i'm trying to fucking make is don't make your life any harder at your workplace being a fucking hardo Enjoy what you have. If you don't feel like you're getting paid enough, go get a different job. Go get a different job. It's that simple. Don't sit around talking about you should be getting paid this, that, and the third. Because, again, nobody's entitled to anything. You're not entitled to shit. You're not entitled to tomorrow. You're not entitled to anything in this fucking world. So if you're not cool with how the situation is playing out, you got to do something about it. Because if you're not, then just shut the fuck up. And by doing something about it, that does not mean turn into a little snitch motherfucker and and, 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 and start to drop fucking uh, uh, <laughs> drop nuggets and spread rumors and get involved in that bullshit. No, that's not what I'm talking about. You work hard. Because let's be honest, working hard is is, is is kind of a dying thing. So I'm assu I'm assuming if you bust your ass and work hard, it's not going to take much for you to get noticed. And if that doesn't work, go somewhere else. It's that simple. You're not feeling the job, go somewhere else. Oh, well, if I go get another job, I'm not I might not have X, Y, and Z. Yeah, no shit. It's called a trade-off. It's called a pro it's called pros and cons. Not everything is gonna be exactly how the fuck you want it to be. You gotta take the wins where you get them. You gotta take the wins where you can get them because a L is coming. I promise you that. A L is coming. And how hard do you want that L to hit? <laughs> how hard, how hard. How heartbroken do you want to be when that L comes? Or are you in a place mentally where you're appreciating what's going on in your life, appreciating the people that you have in your life, appreciating the opportunities that you have that other people don't? Now, I'm not going to drop any fucking names, but there was a kid that I played against in high school who went off and played D1. Thought he was going to the NFL. And now he's in Binghamton homeless. Guys, that's fucking sad. This dude was a Division I athlete and within 10 years he's homeless. That's sad. That could happen to fucking anybody. He was special. He was more special than most people were. Are. Most people don't get to go play Division I anything. Let alone college. He got to go play D1. And guys, what is the difference? How did he get there and how did I get here? 
You know, you got to sit down and think about that shit. Life's a lottery. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it doesn't matter how hard you fucking work. Hard work always gets you a little further, but your starting point might be completely different than someone else's. That's why we we need to stop comparing each other. Oh, well, he does this. I do that. I do this. He does that. Fuck all that. We just worry about yourself, the people that you have in your life, the people that you deal with on a day-to-day basis. Try to make their lives easier because in return, your life should become easier. As long as you're around people that aren't pieces of shit, as long as you're not around people that take advantage of you, but helping other people, helping other people that that have the same sort of ideals as you, a lot of times, man, that can make your life fucking easier or at the very least make you feel like you're doing something, make you feel like, you know, there is a good person in there. (laughs) Because listen, at the end of the day, guys, We all got our own shit going on. We've all done something fucked up in this life. We've all done something that that isn't agreeable. We've all, let me rephrase that. 10 years ago, we've all done something that the version of us today would not find agreeable. You know? And now it's, do you continue to do those things? Do you continue to take people in your life for granted? Do you continue to complain about your job? Do you continue to complain about where you live, how you're living? But then at the same time, you drive downtown, you see homeless people, you see crackheads, and you're not thinking to yourself, God, I'm happy that isn't me. God, a couple different, a couple uh, 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 different choices in my life could have had me in that in that sort of position. No, I don't think most people think of shit like that. So 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 when I'm talking so when I'm talking to my friends and I'm talking to my friend Allie the other day and I'm like, listen, at the end of the day, I'm not shit. And she was like, Oh, that's not nice to say about yourself. And I'm thinking and I'm not thinking. I said, I'm not saying I'm not shit in terms of I'm a piece of shit. I'm saying in the grand scheme of things, I'm not shit. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with playing my piece in the life that I currently live. And if opportunities come, they come. That's great. But you got to be at peace with who the fuck you actually are at the end of the day. If you want to be fucking Kim Kardashian, listen, I'm sorry. You you probably can't be Kim Kardashian. If you want to be Taylor Swift, listen, I'm sorry. You're probably not going to be fucking Taylor Swift. You're probably not going to be these fucking rap superstars. And again, nothing wrong with having goals, nothing wrong with having dreams, but at the same time, there has to be reality to go along with them fucking dreams. You got to have enough money to pay your bills, and then you could go pursue them fucking dreams. <laughs> so guys, be happy with who you are. If you're, if you're not happy with the way that you look, don't go get plastic fucking surgery. Eat better, go work out, drink some more water. If you're if you're upset with how short you are, guys, that I that's just something you're going to have to fucking get over. Yeah, they're doing these different surgeries, they're making these different shoes, but at the end of the day, you're still 5 foot fucking 6. You know you're 5 foot fucking 6. It is what it is, guys. Appreciate what you have. Don't be mad about things that you don't have. The shit is not cute. This internet shit has made it an absolute fucking problem. And in all honesty, end of my fucking rant. You know, I had to get that off my chest. (laughs) I was thinking about it my whole ride back from Binghamton. I was thinking about it for the past couple days, honestly. Do your fucking job. Go home. Enjoy your life. Do your job, go home, enjoy your fucking life. And if you don't enjoy it, do things to change it. If you don't like where you're at, do things to change it. Because if not, I sure as hell don't want to fucking hear it. And I'm sure the people in your life don't want to hear it. Like, bitching and complaining has a time and a place. It's not all the fucking time. Meaning... You're constantly bitching about something, but can't even put it into perspective how good you probably have it. Even the poorest of the poor here have a pretty damn good compared to other places in the fucking world. 
Now, that's not anything that I'm striving for. I'm not saying I would like to trade places, but I'm just putting things into perspective. Enjoy your fucking life. Enjoy the people around you and do right by them. Plain and simple. And now we're going on to our next topic. Now, with my previous rant, this kind of ties into it, right? So if you guys haven't been paying attention, Joe Biden is 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 making it so you can get up to twenty thousand dollars in loan forgiveness. Now, fucking great idea. It's absolutely insane how much fucking school costs. Uh, and but in this day and age, you pretty much need to go to college at least in some way or form to get any sort of decent job that doesn't require me to break my goddamn back every single day. But with that said, excuse me, there's been a whole bunch of bitching and complaining about Joe Biden forgiving between 10 and 20 grand for student loans. Okay, now there's a couple things that we need to address here. All right. First off is the people that currently have no student debt student loan debt those people that are that that, that have the fucking balls to get on social media and complain about how they've already paid their shit off now listen if you've paid your student loans off you're probably in a position to pay your student loans off you following me If your student loans are paid off, that means you're living a pretty good fucking life. Again, no hating, no counting of your fucking money, but you're probably living okay. Right? Correct? Could could we all agree? Poor people are the ones that have student loans. Poor people are the ones that needed financial aid and so on and so forth to go to college. A lot of people on the fucking internet complaining didn't have those things, didn't have to take out loans. Uh, uh, Parents worked at the school, so you get to go to school for free. These are the same people that are turning around and saying, well, my tax dollars shouldn't have to pay for that. My tax dollars shouldn't have to do this. My tax dollars. Listen, guys, when we start complaining about where the fuck our tax dollars are actually going... When we start to have that conversation, it's a little more in-depth than, oh, student loans got forgiven, so I got to pay for it. You guys don't say shit about the millions and billions of dollars that get forgiven every single year around tax season for millionaires and billionaires. You don't have shit to say about that. How many times times does $10,000 go into Jeff Bezos' $5 million uh, uh, tax refund? How the fuck is that man getting a $5 million tax refund? So so when you're griping and bitching and complaining about student loan forgiveness, that's your way of saying, I want people less than me. I want people to struggle. Even though I didn't have to struggle, I want people to struggle. And, 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 and for the people that said, well, I had to do it, I've always hated those kinds of people. Just because you had to do something doesn't mean that everybody else has to do it as well. When I got beat up freshman beat down day, freshman year of high school, I didn't beat other people up going forward because I got beat up as a freshman. That, 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 that line of logic is fucking idiotic to me. Just because I had it bad don't mean that you got to have it bad. Now, now, if you are one of these people that paid it off and you're looking for some sort of tax break, I believe you deserve it. The government should hook you up, too. You paid off your three hundred thousand dollars in student loans. Cool. But you motherfuckers talking about, oh, well, you shouldn't have went to college if you couldn't afford it. Do you know how empty colleges would be if that's how that fucking worked? Oh, your family can't afford $75,000 a year to go to college and you just shouldn't go. That is not how this country fucking works. That's not even what people were sold on when this country was in conception. This country was supposed to be formed and revolved around some sort of fairness. Now, while you get to go to school and your family can pay for it every single fucking year, does not mean that my family can. And why can't I go to college? And nobody's saying, I don't want to pay anything back. No one's saying, I want to go for free. 
But people are also saying, I don't, it's not fair that I can't buy a house. It's not fair that I can't get a car. It's not fair that I can't go get a fucking engagement ring because I owe X amount on my student fucking loans and that looks absolutely terrible on my credit. That's not fair. And again, we've talked about life isn't fucking fair. And at the end of the day, life will continue to be unfair with or without these student loans. That brings me to the next point is the PPP loans that were given out to everybody. Nobody, including politicians who are saying that the student loan forgiveness thing is a sham. They didn't say nothing when it came time for them to uh, uh, their loans to be forgiven, their PPP loans to be forgiven. And I got receipts today, guys. It's completely unfair, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene says. Taxpayers that never took out a student loan, taxpayers that pay their bills and maybe never went to college and are just hardworking people, they shouldn't have to pay off the great student loan debt for some college students. Guys, guys, this woman got a $183,000 PPP business loan that was forgiven, meaning she didn't have to pay back shit. But this woman has the audacity to talk about 10, 20 grand. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, the White House also called out Rep. Vern Buchanan for having over $2.3 million in PPP loan forgiveness. Representative Mark Wayne Mullen also had $1.4 million in PPP loan forgiveness. Representative Kevin Hearn had over $1 million in PPP loan forgiveness. Asking plumbers and carpenters to pay off the loans of Wall Street advisors and lawyers isn't just unfair, it's also bad policy, Representative Mike Kelly tweeted. Representative Mike Kelly got 987 or excuse me, just under $1 million in PPP loans forgiven. Finally, the White House called out Matt Gates for having $482,000 in PPP loans forgiven. The tweets received hundreds of retweets and replies. Literally, whoever is in charge of White House account needs <laughs> needs an immediate promotion and raise. <laughs> yeah, someone tweeted that. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just going through this article. But it's the truth. It's the God's honest truth. How are, do you have the nerve to complain about... Motherfuckers trying to get on the right track. The government trying to help people get on the right track when they did the same thing for you. And I promise you, you representatives, you senators, you politicians are in a lot better position than the average person. And let's be quite fucking honest about something here. It's not like you guys put in a bunch of time and effort and broke your back and, and, and did a whole bunch of fucking manual labor to get to where you got to. You knew somebody, you did good work. That's how you got to where the fuck you got to. And some of you, I'm sure, had longer roads than others. But your lives are pretty goddamn good right now. Especially if you could take out a fucking... $200,000 uh, loan and above and get it forgiven your lives are pretty fucking good stop being greedy bastards stop being selfish and while taxpayers money may go to pay off student loan forgiveness how the fuck do you think your loans got forgiven hmm how do you really think that your millions and millions and millions of dollars in PPP loans, if not billions of dollars in PPP loans, actually got forgiven? But you don't care about none of that. You don't care. It's not your life. And I really hope that your voters start to realize that as well. You don't give a fuck about them. You're not doing this job to help the, the people that live in your district. You're doing this for you because I guarantee you there is some correlation with how long you've been serving in Congress and how much money you got forgiven or how much money was given to you. See, Marjorie Taylor Greene's only a one-term congressperson. Those other people, I'm, I bet you they've been there for some time getting two million, three million, million. You got that forgiven, but you got the motherfucking nerve. The fucking nerve to say anything about anyone else. You have the nerve 
to bitch and complain about people's taxes being risen or, 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 or being raised that make over a certain amount of money when you motherfuckers haven't been paying taxes for years. I think it's your turn. 15% of what you motherfuckers make is a lot different than the 15% I make. And I'm only bitching and complaining about it because you motherfuckers are. I'm only bitching and complaining about it because you guys who have gotten absurd amount of money in loans forgiven have the nerve to complain about me getting 10, 20 grand off of my student loans. So my goddamn credit score could rise a little bit and maybe someday I can get a second house. Now, if that doesn't happen, listen, life's good anyway. Life's good anyway. But like anyone else in this world, I would like to level up throughout life. At 50 years old, I would like to own some shit that I don't own today. That's it. I'm not being greedy. I'm not fucking trying to ask for more than I actually think I deserve. And even when we start talking about who deserves what, guys, that goes back to being entitled to things. I'm not, I don't deserve shit because life is not fair. But if we're forgiving $200,000 fucking loans, if we're getting half a million dollar loans, $2 million loans, yo, man, just get, break a nigga off a little piece. I just need a little piece. That's it. <laughs> I'm not asking for much. You know, and I will be grateful for the rest of my life over it. I won't forget. I'll be telling my grandkids about how fucking, if it was Donald Trump, how Donald Trump forgave my student loans. Because let's, let's also not get it twisted. If Donald Trump was the one that decided to do this, you Republicans would be mum. You would have nothing to say. You would just shut the fuck up and, and praise him and talk about how great this is going to be for the economy, how great this is going to be for the average person. But yet again, you want to try to play that average person shit, but don't want to talk about how you've come up. The come ups that you've gotten throughout your life. You want to make a big fuss about 10 grand when you motherfuckers are getting a million dollars, two million. How many times does 10,000 go, go into a million? A lot, quite a few, more than one. So, so, so if the government was, was really, truly that concerned with how much it cost and how things were going to get paid, I'm sure they would have just not given you that million dollar loan forgiveness package and instead given a hundred people loan forgiveness. But that's not how that played out. Why? Because there's enough fucking money to go around when you assholes making X amount of money, start paying your fucking taxes. There is no way way in the world that that teachers, that heavy equipment operators should be getting a bill. A bill come tax season. Oh, you owe the government $500. Oh, you owe the government $750. That should not be a thing when people like Jeff Bezos are getting a fucking refund for multi-millions of dollars. That's not fucking right. That's not right at all. And I don't want to hear this all oh, while well, we created jobs. We do X, Y, and Z. Fuck that. You create jobs and you're a fucking billionaire. You're living quite well off of quote unquote creating jobs. It's time to do a little more. It's time to give back just a tad bit fucking more. Because I don't get how you guys feel okay with yourselves. I really, truly don't. Because you know how much work you don't do. You know how mu you know how good your back feels at the end of the day. Your knees, your ankles, all the joints throughout your fucking body. You know how good you feel at the end of the fucking day. While you're watching people do all the fucking hard work. But you, but you feel okay. Just being like, oh, that, that, that's good enough. You know what? You know what? I'm, I'm the richest man in the world, but... We're we're gonna praise how we're how we're paying our employees fifteen dollars an hour. We're, we're we're gonna market that. We're gonna act like this is the greatest fucking thing since sliced bread. How we put, how we pay our employees fifteen dollars an hour. Man, get the fuck out my face, man. Pay up. Time to pay up. Time to pay up. And I promise you, once this becomes a regular thing, the Republicans. Well, I should probably shouldn't say that because they always find something to fucking complain about. <laughs> Unless they do it. If this was their idea, they would have had no problem. 
They would have no fucking problem. But anyway, that's that, that, that's how that's how I feel. <laughs> that's how I feel. We got a bunch of greedy fucks. We got a bunch of Congress people who swear to God that what they're doing is right and what everyone else is doing is fucking wrong. Hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in PPP loans, but you guys really have a beef with the president of the United States trying to hook us all up. Guys, you 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 remember you remember when those when those stimulus checks were coming out? You remember? And they came out two, three weeks late because Donald Trump wanted to sign the checks. Did you hear the Republicans say anything? Did you hear them say anything? When they gave in 2017 when they passed that tax bill and it gave the millionaires and billionaires tax write-offs ain't nobody say shit no republicans said a motherfucking thing all they did for us was make our wt our w2 form a lot more simple than it was which was great that was cool it was one fucking page two pages now that was great that was cool but that is not the same trade-off that these motherfuckers got <laughs> it sure as hell was it but I could go on I could go on this for days, guys. I could go on about this shit for days. But again, if 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 Trump was to do this, I would have told him good fucking job, thank you. You did something good here. But just cuz Joe Biden did it, we're not going to act like he's fucking chopped liver. We're not going to act like this nigga's dog food now. Give credit where credit's fucking due. Donald Trump, I really, truly don't fucking know what that man did besides Space Force. And everybody made fun of him for Space Force, but that was like a genuinely good move that he fucking took. You know, the rest of the world is trying to figure out fucking space. We might as well, too. And I, But I, at the same time, I'm pretty sure that that was already in the works before he became the fucking president anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he gets to he gets to claim that, and that's something that he should fucking claim. Besides that, fuck on my face. All right, guys, a couple more things I wanted to touch on, then we're gonna get the fuck up out of here. Um, so for you guys that don't know, one championship is now on Amazon Prime. At least some of their events, and guys, I I. I very much encourage you to to watch these events. They're super fucking cool. I've talked about it before. It's not just MMA. They have multiple things going on, and the fights are just always bangers. They are, they just are, and I and, and and I think this just comes from a place where people are hungry. You know, pe- people want to do better for themselves, and they know that this is their way to do so. You know, even if they do take a loss, if you go in there and you put on a fucking show, you entertain, you're going to get invited back time and time again. And that's what I just continue to see with one. Said it last week. Don't know anybody's fucking name for the most part. Don't know them. But, well, I shouldn't say I don't know them. I can't pronounce them. I can fucking barely speak English. <laughs> I can barely speak English as it is. So trying to pronounce some of these names is very difficult. But I have nothing but fucking respect for these people. It's far, I, I, in my opinion, like I said last week, I think it's the number two organization in the world. Uh, um, from like a fan standpoint, I think it's a lot closer to to dub or not WWE UFC than anyone really wants to give it credit. Um, but anyway, this past weekend they had their first event on Amazon Prime, and it was Demetrius Johnson versus uh, uh, uh what the hell was my na- my man's name, Marais. What the fuck was. Uh, uh, Mighty Mouse. Demetrius. Was it Adrian Marais? One sec. I should know his fucking name. I should have came prepared. Adriano Marais. Now, I said last week, this is a fucking massive human. I don't know how he makes it to 135. His body type definitely looks more 145 or even maybe a smaller 155 pounder. And Demetrius for majority of his career was a 125 pounder so when i after he got knocked the fuck out last time with some with some knees to a grounded opponent which is legal in one championship it's not legal in the ufc but it is legal in in one championship after seeing that i thought that this fight was going to go 
exactly the same. You know, the guy's younger. He's a lot fucking bigger. He's I don't think he's as quick as as as, as Demetrius, but he's fucking quick. He's fast. His, he kicks fast. His hands are fast. He he's fucking quick on his feet. I thought it was gonna be another problem for Demetrius, but Demetrius showed us why he is one of the best. Why he was number I believe four on my greatest of all time list that I put out a couple weeks ago. Go check that out. I'll put the link to, uh, to that in the description. Um, but that's why he was number four. It's because he has overcome things like this. He knows how to go into deep waters and survive. He's ready for the world to end. <laughs> you know, there's those people in the world out there in the world where you're like, yo, if, if a zombie apocalypse happened, I'd, I'd want him on my team. In the in in MMA war in the MMA world, that's what Demetrius Johnson is. He's been there, he's done that. He knows exactly how to fucking handle himself, and he absolutely proved me wrong on on last Friday night. Now I'm a Demetrius fan, but I just didn't. I thought the 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 deck was stacked against him, and I did not think that this was going to happen. It was a great fight. He got hit with some of those knees while he was downed, but I think he was prepared for him this time. He looked he looked like he knew it was coming. He looked like he was he he I don't even know. I don't even know how to fuck you train for that. <laughs> how do you train for getting need in your fucking face when you're on the ground? I don't know, but he was very much prepared and the irony of it is he put him down with a flying knee. While he got put down last time with knees to a grounded opponent, this time Demetrius Johnson took out Marais with a fucking flying knee and then walked off like a fucking gangster. I want to say, what's Demetrius, 35, 36 now? This is another person who I probably only want to see fight a handful of times because I don't want the fights to look like they did the fight prior. I don't want to see you stretched out on the canvas, bro. But I know you proved the world wrong and I'm sure you made a lot of people fucking a ton of money and I truly hope that you got more than just the fifty thousand dollar bonus because you deserved it. <laughs> you absolutely fucking deserved it. Now let's transition to this weekend. This weekend's my birthday. Homie's turning 30. Big 3 0. Oh, I feel it. It's kinda it's 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 kinda made me sad. <laughs> <laughs> Life fucking flies. When you're 16, you think you're going to be just be 16 forever. Even if you're like, you know, one day I'm going to be 21, I'm going to be able to do this, then third. You don't really take into account how fast this life goes. You know, so yeah, 30 this week, even just saying it, 30 this weekend. But I digress. Um, my present, the one that I really wanted more than anything, or I shouldn't say wanted, the one I'm happiest with, I shouldn't even say happiest, the one I'm looking forward to, I shouldn't even say looking forward to the most. Listen, I'm just happy that the UFC on my birthday is starting at fucking noon. 12 in the afternoon. This 10 o'clock at night shit is for the birds. I love a nice early start. I'm going to fucking get up early in the morning, about 3, 4 o'clock. I'm going to throw my fucking pork roast in the crock pot so by i'm gonna do eight hours on low that's, that's how i do it eight hours on low uh around hours around the six and a half seven hour mark i, I drain throw the barbecue sauce in there because if you throw the barbecue sauce in too early you're not even gonna fucking taste the barbecue sauce it's just gonna be watered down fucking pulled pork so always just wait you don't the sauce doesn't need to be in there the whole fucking time you could put you could throw the salt the pepper all that type of shit in there first but hold off on the sauce but anyway, I'm going to wake up about 3, 4 o'clock. I'm going to throw the fucking pork uh, 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 roast in the crock pot. I'm going to have my tortilla chips. And I'm just going to fucking enjoy the fights. I might have a drink or two. I might have something to smoke. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but it's going to be a great fucking 30th birthday. It's going to be a great fucking 30th birthday. And there's some great fights. Marvin Vittori versus Robert Whitaker, great fucking co main event. I don't, I don't know if that's a three or a five round. I would like to see that one be five round since that's unofficially a number one contenders match. And if you're a number one contender, you're going to be fighting in a five round fight. So I would like to see. I, I got to check. I don't know exactly uh, uh, how many rounds that is. But then the main event is Tai Tuivasa versus Sorel Gan. 
And I'm very much assuming somebody's getting knocked the fuck out that fight too. Now who? My my heart is telling me Ty, but my mind is telling me it's gonna be surreal. I think Sorrell has more weapons than Ty does, but Ty is a swanger and banger. He's going to take some to give some, and those type of people are the dangerous, most dangerous in any combat sport. If somebody is dead as willing to take some punches to give you the perfect punch in return, that's a dangerous fucking person. So, like I said... Hearts, heart saying tie, mind saying surreal. The mind's usually right. <laughs> mind's usually right. Heart's usually fucking wrong in terms of UFC. Um, so I, so I think I'm going. If I had to put money on it for the for for the main and co-main, co-main, I'm taking Robert Whitaker. I think he is the second best as it stands today on April 31st 2022 I think he's the second best 185 pounder in the world behind Izzy uh, I think Izzy has a very tough fight that is very losable for him coming up against Alex Pereira um, but as it stands today I think Robert Whitaker is the second best 185 pounder in the world and I think between Ty and Cyril I think those are both top five heavyweights in the world that can put your fucking lights out in an instant um, so so if I had to pick on the last one I'm taking Robert and Cyril those are just my picks. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do a little parlay since it's the birthday. Do a little fucking three, four, five dollar parlay. We'll see how I'm feeling, but um, definitely looking forward to it. If you guys don't have anything going on, you guys should definitely check it out. But also, college football season's coming up this week, so I'm very excited for that. It's 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 gonna be sensory overload over here Saturday, and I'm so much looking forward to it. It has been a couple years since I've looked forward to football season. It's my my whole entire sports world has revolved around UFC for quite some fucking time and I don't see that changing but I do miss football <laughs> I do miss football uh, and I sure as hell miss college football that used to be a whole entire fucking thing for me maybe even more so than, than the NFL was so I'm looking forward to that I'm looking forward to the fights I'm looking forward to the food I'm looking forward to the well wishes that I'm going to get it's, it's, it's going to be a good weekend guys life is good everything is fucking good I hope things are good for you and if not you know you got to change things you yourself has to put yourself in a position that you want to be or at least work towards that you know good things happen to people who do put in the time who do put in the backbreaking work to get places the opportunities will rise but they won't just stay stagnant for you you got to snatch them shits up when you can you know let's keep the bitching to the minimum this week or no no we should even say that bitch complain do all those things that make you feel better but at the same time realize that it's not the end of the world get it off your chest and keep it moving deal <laughs> deal but all right guys that's the podcast today man thank you for coming to listen to me bitch moan and complain and i hope you got something out of it um and i will continue to to do this i will continue to work on getting some guests on here and again guys guest situations i don't have them on every single week because it's tough you know you try to set things up people got lives going on people got jobs that they got to work but we're going to keep working at it you know i think we got 30 something guests in in 120 episodes we're averaging pretty much a guest a month i, I like that um i would like to do more i am before 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 I leave, me and Duff are doing a of a, 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 a weekly football podcast this coming up year. We're sitting down this week. We're going to talk out the details, but we are going to do a weekly football podcast. Me, Duff, and maybe we'll have some other guests on throughout. Maybe we'll have some other co-hosts come join us. But definitely look out for that if you're if you're interested in football. And in all honesty, I would like this to branch out. I'd like to have somebody do a weekly MMA podcast with as well. So, you know, we're just working. Like doing it. Enjoy doing it. Got to put in the time for things that you enjoy doing so you can become better at them. 
you know you gotta the more that you do this the better you're gonna get at it the better you're gonna get at it formulating thoughts the better you're gonna get at it having conversations with people and just keep i'm gonna keep grinding you guys keep grinding and you know just look out for for that football podcast that's coming out we'll definitely have a episode out either right after week one or right before week one we're still figuring out the the um the, the the finer details of this but it is coming and definitely look out for it guys Whew, shit it's fucking hot as hell down here the pups be the pups have been pretty quiet though so that's been that's been good maybe i can let them chill a little bit more while i'm doing the podcast i hate that i have to lock them up for you know an hour or two while i do this so if they can chill the fuck out i would be more than happy to have them here it's always nice to have them around they bring they they do bring good energy. They do bring good energy. Maybe sometimes it's a little too much, but they do bring the good energy. And uh yeah guys, like I said that's the podcast. Uh I'll catch you next week. Thursdays like always. I'm liking the the uh, uh setting them up Wednesday nights to be released on Thursday premieres or whatever the hell they're called I like doing that because then Thursday I don't have to fucking worry about anything I could go to work I could come home the shit's already up there ready to go I don't have to worry about anything but what I do want to do is I want to cut down the segments and put them out there because some people don't want to listen to a fucking 45 hour long podcast they might just want to get those quick little 10 minute sections of the podcast in. so I'm going to try to be better at breaking those down and putting those on the youtube page and other streaming platforms um in terms of youtube yeah we definitely didn't get that one video back up but we haven't heard shit else in terms of any video that i put up since so keep at it keep on keeping on as joe dirt would say but yeah guys that's all the house cleaning i got for you um be back next week look out for mine and duff's uh, football and I don't even we might even cover some college ball but look out for the football podcast coming to you in the next couple of weeks guys and like always be safe be easy and wash your ass I'm out of here peace